One of my favorite things about this whole board gaming community is introducing people to games they may never have heard of or reminding them that some of these games exist and how great they actually are. My list today are five games that I own, that I love, that have been criminally ignored or have been completely forgotten so that people can remember to get them out and get them back to the table and remember how fantastic these games really are. So here we go, let's do it, the list. Jupiter Rescue. Jupiter Rescue is a cooperative game from Twilight Creations. They're the guys that made zombies with all the exclamation points. And this game, I gotta say, I was so surprised how much I loved it. It's a cooperative game that takes place on a space station and all the players play robots that are trying to protect the humans that work on the space station while there are these weird, they're called creeps, aliens are invading the station. So it's made up of a whole bunch of tiles and each of the tiles have rooms in them that are connected by passageways and whatnot. And you're trying to move your robots out to kill the aliens and to command the people that are on the space station to get into the, the, the escape pods and escape. So if you get seven people onto the escape pods, they escape and you're trying to make a certain number of people escape. I think it's like 28 or something people for the win, right? Now the creeps are coming in and every time they're adjacent to a human, they're going to turn them into another creep and you take the human off and you put them on this track. And once the track gets to the zero spot, you lose the game because you can't physically get your 28 people off. This game is such a great, great, great cooperative game. I love this game. The production's fun. The tiles are cool looking. The aliens are goofy looking. I like them. The human beings are great because they're like screaming and ah, and the robots you're playing are cool too because you have a deck of cards that you draw from and you can play special powers to give them rocket jumps and, and you do a bullhorn that you can command the humans from across the board instead of adjacent to you and things like that. Uh, this game is just so much fun because there's a ton of coordination in this game. There's a ton of, 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 of cool player powers and cards that you can play on these monsters. There's interesting ways that the monsters will interact with the space station, like covering up your, your, your communication arrays so you can't take as many actions. You have to kill those guys off. Man, I just really dig this game. And the difficulty is so neat how, how, it's, uh, how it scales. Uh, the, each tile has a easy side and a hard side every tile in the game. So when you build the board, you can turn as many of the tiles to the hard side as you want. So essentially, you could go like a oh, one tile. Mm, that's not really all that much harder, but a little bit, but you can do five, you can do 10, you can do 15, you can do all of them and make that, that gradual shift from an easy game to a hard game. This game is great. It is designed so well. The production is fun. It doesn't play too super long. It's like an hour long to play. Love it, love it. Go check out Jupiter Rescue. Cave Troll. This one is one that is designed by Tom Jolly. It's a fairly old game, and it was Tom Jolly also designed Wiz War, which is another fantastic game. I love Wiz War. Now, this one is essentially a area majority type game that takes place in a dungeon. Each one of the dungeon rooms has a bunch of coins printed on it, and that's how many points you're going to score during a scoring phase. And you have a ton of different guys that are going into this dungeon and trying to control these various rooms. You got your regular old adventurers have no powers. You got dwarves and elves and paladins and barbarians and all sorts of characters that have special abilities that you could send in there that'll affect the board in some capacity. You'll move guys around. You take certain number of people to overtake a certain guy. You also have monsters like orcs and phantoms and the cave troll, which is the title of the game, who's the most powerful guy. Everybody has a deck of cards and has the exact same number of those characters. And each one of those special characters is only one of each of them. And you're trying to move them into the dungeon and trying to take over those rooms. The game plays so simply in that you can essentially on your turn move a character that's in the dungeon or you can draw a card and play a card, which essentially all the time you have a hand of one card. You by drawing a card, you have two cards, you choose which one you wanna play, boom. That's either spawning a guy in one of the entrance halls or uh, doing some kind of special thing. You can get some artifacts that are kind of cool that'll help you out in the game. Um, it's such a neat game. And it's one of those games that I always take with me to any game session because it's kind of in between a filler and a full on game. Because it takes about an hour, sometimes an hour and 15 minutes to play it with a good number of players. It takes no time at all to teach this game because it's so simple. And it's not like a super deep game either, but there is some serious tactics to this game and how you use your decks. 
Now, a lot of people might say that this game is kind of random because everybody has the same deck and it's shuffled, right? So like your cave troll might be at the very bottom of the deck and you'll never see it by the time the game ends just because of the way the game played out. So some people have a problem with that concept, but I think that randomness is kind of part of the charm of this game and kind of part of the strategy of this game because you can never expect what you're gonna get when you're gonna get it, when you can use it in the dungeon. You have to use what you have at your disposal. Uh, there's so many different options with these different characters and there's a, there's a treasure chest that you can place on the board which uh, increases the value of the room and all kinds of stuff. I just love this game. I think it's totally rad. And this game is on Amazon for like $19. It is an absolute steal for $19. Bunch of miniatures, really cool board, whole bunch of cards and stuff. If you're not buying a game for $19, it's crazy. It's worth one play. One play this game is worth. And I guarantee you, you'll play it more than once because it's really, really good. Cave Troll, check it out. Holmes, Sherlock and Mycroft. Now we're going to sort of the other end of the spectrum here, and this is a very small two-player Euro game. Uh, this one is basically the theme of Sherlock Holmes, and you're trying to solve some sort of mystery, and you're collecting evidence to solve the mystery, and you're working against your brother Mycroft, if you're Sherlock and Mycroft, right? Like the two players. And essentially, it's a set collection game. Think of it kind of like Ticket to Ride, where you're collecting sets of different types of cards. Uh, and the cards are evidence, obviously. And each type of evidence is worth different values of points based on its frequency in the deck. And it's a worker placement game, as there's a little board where you put out cards, and the cards are the action spaces. They're the various characters from the Sherlock Holmes mythos, right? And each one of those characters, as you place your meeples on them, will either get you clue tokens, or you can spend those clue tokens to draw cards that the sets you're trying to create uh, from the track. And each one of the characters that comes out as every round goes on, you put a new character out, it's a new action space, they start to interact. They have a different ability, some sort of variation of collecting those cards, getting um, the, the clue tokens, or interacting with the other player, or swapping cards, or whatever. So as it plays out, uh, it gets more robust as it goes. Like the beginning of the game is so easy because there's only like five action spaces. They're all very basic. But as it grows, the game gets more and more complex as it goes. Really neat two-player Euro game. I kind of put it on the level of like uh, Agricola, all creatures big and small and the uh, uh, Le Havre in Inland Port, like those two-player Euro games that are kind of small box, but they still have like a robustness to them. This one's a great sort of gateway Euro game for maybe a husband and a wife to play or like a, you know, a mom and a daughter to play. You know, it's kind of, it works out really well just being that two players and it's very easy to teach. I really like this game. It's an elegantly designed game. The, the worker placement concept is neat. How instead of placing workers, you're actually kind of moving your workers. So you can't go to a space that you took in the last turn because then there's a meeple there already. Really cool game. I highly recommend checking it out. This is another one you can get on Amazon. Uh, I think it's like $30 or something. And it's actually, I think it's worth that price. If you have a regular two player game night, you know, with your, with a husband and wife or something, perfect. So check it out. Holmes, Sherlock and Mycroft. Meeple War. <sighs> I always hate saying the name of this game because it's such a stupid name. But man, this game is just absolutely fantastic. It is a wonderful little war game. It's a tiny little war game. It's a little box. And I guarantee you that this game would not be forgotten and would be spoken about if it was in a bigger box, it had some miniatures maybe, uh, it had a different theme on it, like an actual uh, appealing theme and wasn't named Meeple War. Meeple War is the most awful name that I could ever imagine any game ever having. The front of this box is completely abysmally bad. It's terrible. The artwork is great. Inside the box with the buildings and the tiles and everything else, all the components are wonderful. I just wish that this one, they had a little more faith in this one and really gave it a good production because I swear this game has every bit as much quality as a Blood Rage, as a Godfather, as any of those. This is as good as those games in my opinion, but it just has a crappy theme. So basically it's a war game. You have a little town that you start out in. Everybody starts around the board. There's tile uh, tiles all over the board that you explore. You flip them over as you move your armies into them. And those tiles could have uh, points that you can control that'll give you a special ability of some sort. Or it could have a, a, you know, a mine that'll take you across the board. Or it could have a tower that'll score you victory points for holding it. And your town, you're actually 
constructing buildings in your town. They have little action spaces on them that you put your little workers on and they move down. And when they complete their tasks, you build a building or you build more troops. You could build an airship. You could build a cannon that shoots other people's towns, all sorts of different things. And throughout the game, you can destroy other people's buildings. And when you do, they go out of the game. They have to construct a new building, a different one. So the game keeps evolving in strategies as it goes, as the players are interacting with each other. And obviously it's a war game, so your armies are clashing. Very simple uh, combat mechanic. It's just a one-for-one -one kill guys, and whoever's left over controls the tile then. This game is such a neat little war game that has such great strategy, has such great concepts, the mechanisms of building buildings and the mechanisms of, of controlling points and towers and getting victory points. It's This game is terrific. I love this game and it is criminally, it, it's criminal, it's criminal how this game is named and the theme, it's, mm, it drives me crazy. Who wants to play a game called Meeple War? Well, I wanna play a game called Meeple War because I know it's good, but nobody out there is gonna see this on the shelf. You could probably even get this game at the, the uh, in the, the clearance bin at your local game store, even if they even bothered to stock it in the first place because of the way it looks. It drives me insane because this game is great and it was, it just looks terrible if you see it sitting on the shelf. So look past that. Don't judge this book by its cover. Take my advice. Try the game out. I'm sure you can find it. Amazon, I think, has got it for a relatively inexpensive price. Uh, try it. You will like it. If you like that kind of, you know, lighter war games, this game's really good. Please. It's so good. I just wish that it would come back with a better theme. This, this whole game engine that they got behind this game is fun. Check it out. Meeple War. It's really good. Garden Dice. Now I saved my favorite for last. This was the second Kickstarter I ever backed. And it is still one of my favorite Kickstarters I ever backed because it's such a good game. Now this is a, a simple, more family style game. And basically what you're doing is planting a garden. Uh, you roll four dice and each one of those dice you spend to take some sort of action, whether it's buying seeds or planting those seeds on the board. Uh, or you can water those seeds to turn them into vegetables. You flip the seed over and it becomes a vegetable. Or to harvest those vegetables, picking them up, putting them in your area, and you'll score points for them at the end of the game. Uh, really, that's all there is to it. But it's got this really neat concept when you water them and when you harvest them. It's called a cascade. Uh, basically, if you water one plant, it's going to water a bunch of different plants around it, and it can cascade down and you're actually watering your opponent's plants as well. So you're kind of giving them actions by taking certain actions. So there's a lot of spatial relations that go on on the board, trying to make sure that you position well so that you can get a whole bunch of your stuff watered and not as much as theirs. Um, and actually you get a little bit of reward for watering their plants or harvesting their plants, but you'd rather just have all your stuff harvested and all your stuff watered. Uh, there's special spaces on the board that give you bonus points for planting there. Uh, they have scarecrows. They have uh, uh, birds and rabbits that will run around and eat each other's stuff. Um, it's just a really, really cool game. This game is such a simple game to play, simple game to teach. It's so wonderful for families. Uh, the production is stellar and awesome. But the biggest problem with this game is you currently cannot get, the, get this game that I can find. You have to pay a lot of money to find this game because it's on the aftermarket at this point, which makes me sad. I really wish... And the reason, one of the reasons I put this on here is because I really want them to bring it back. I want them to make a reprint of this game because it's just so good. If you find this game on the BGG Marketplace or you find it on eBay or something, consider picking it up because it's a great, great, great game. Garden Dice, it's one of my favorite Kickstarters I ever backed and it's a simple dice game. I love it. It's just that good. Garden Dice, check it out. All right, everybody. Well, that's it for today. I hope I helped you discover some games or maybe rediscover some old games that you forgot about. These are all games that I have in my collection that I love. I love playing these games. So I hope that you found something that interests you. All right. Until next time, everybody. Have a good one. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.